Hey guys, Jim N here, welcome to my video. Today I will present you a list of 10 albums which will get you started with the big sub Japanese subculture Visual K. Um, please keep in mind, this isn't a best list or a list of the most influential albums. Some of these may not even be the most important albums of the bands that I feature. Um, it's basically heavily focused on my very own experience. Many of these albums brought me personally to the Visual K, and yeah, I hope they will do the same for you. So, stay tuned, we will discover this list together right after the intro. Our first album is Withering to Death by Dion Grey. In the mid 2000s I was a fresh metal head and started to discover many different hard and heavy bands. One of the ways to do this was the German magazine called Metal Hammer. Um, in 2006 it featured a bonus DVD um, with different video clips, one of them being Saku. Um, back at the time I didn't really know how, how I should think about this crazy style of music and visuals, however it left, left me pretty impressed. Sadly it took like pff, around two years until I came back to the band uh, with the release of, uh, or not the release, but when I discovered The Marrow of the Bone. Um, in this time I was a big fan of new metal, I had kind of my own personal new metal revival, I heard uh, listen to Slipknot, Korn, Spineshank, American Head Charge, uh, many many different bands, and yeah, this raw and and aggressive style of the Mother of the Bone really got my attention. So it's only naturally that I tried to discover um, the rest of that disc uh, discography. Then I picked up Withering to Death, and it wasn't what it wasn't really what uh, I was expecting. Um, it was kinda crazy and so much different from the Marrow of a Bone. However, I already fell in love with the album right after the first seconds of the opener Merciless Cult. And as you may know, it's until today one of my most favorites uh, of the band. So what really impressed me was this, this pure mix of different styles. You had aggressive and chaotic songs like Saku or Garbage. Then you had these these fragile and melodic songs like uh, Dead Tree or Higeki Wa. And you had also these really catchy like hit singles like Koto, The Final C. And yeah, um, on top of this was this crazy vocalist who did all kinds of weird sounds and screams and still had a, a very impressive clean voice. It seemed a bit all over the place, the songwriting, but looking at it and listening to it more and more, um, I would say it started to make more sense. And in some sense, it's like the definition of Visual K. Okay? You express yourself and write music like you want to write it. So Visual K okay is, like this album shows, a big middle finger to... Um, the music industry with their calculated songs where everything is the same. One thing was for sure, after listening to this life-changing experience, I wanted to hear more. And there was one band name which I read in many different magazines like Rock Hard, Metal Hammer, EMP, all these German metal um, magazines mentioned one band, and this was Muck. And the journalists described their music as some crazy mix of rock, pop, new metal and even death metal. Um, yeah, it turned out some of this wasn't accurate, but back at the time I thought, this is exactly what I want to listen to. So I didn't have any knowledge uh, about the band and just picked a random album. And I um, ended up with Kuchiki Noto. In retrospective, this wasn't the best um, decision, because the album is pretty major and challenging for the listener. I think also Kuchiki no 2 may be the darkest and most progressive uh, album that they ever released. And it doesn't really have much in common with their newer songs like Enter Enter or Mother. Still got me hooked from the beginning to the end, 
Um, maybe because back at the time I slowly um, dived away from this new metal style and started to listen to more progressive bands. I listened to the old Dead Tree, Opeth, and many of these um, very progressive um, bands, which kind of go away from the traditional songwriting. And I think Kuchiki Noto is exactly in the same spot. And I think Kuchiki Noto is an uh, emotional roller coaster with with really excellent songwriting. It's always on these, the edge between these um, melodic and calm, dramatic moments and these aggressive outbreaks on the other side. Um, especially the singer um, Tatsu uh, had one of his best studio performances and he added many different um, colors to the music with his voice and his different expressions. Don't get me wrong, uh, Muk released many great albums and many great songs and also their, their change with every album, the experiment with new genres doesn't bother me too much. I don't mind their experiments. But still, I think Kuchiki no Tour will still remain as the peak of their um, creativity for me. Um, at this point, I didn't care too much about the visual side of Visual K. And this changed with an old video CD um, from a gothic magazine called Sonic City User. Um, I got this uh, CD from a 2005 uh, magazine and there was the music video for Garnet by Despair's Ray and I really felt like the dark talk setting in the music video and this cold industrial metal sound worked really well together and this was the first time I really learned to enjoy this combination of music and uh, visuals. Of course I had to check out the full album uh, where this song came from and this was called Set. I think many Despair's Ray fans may say that albums like Redeemer or a mirror feature way more important songs, but for me, Call Set will always remain as this special album of them because it was my first experience with the band. Compared with the other two albums on this list, Call Set seems more conventional and streamlined, but I still think the songwriting was on point. Uh, you have hits like Dears or Forbidden, uh, which are just timeless and occupy me and still today I still have them in my playlists. And I also enjoyed the Western influences. Um, for example, Marilyn Manson is something that you can really hear in the sound, his influence. And back at the time, I also listened to Marilyn Manson. Hollywood is like one of the most important rock albums, in my opinion. And yeah, so I really enjoyed the style. And I would also say, especially their kind of music was something unique in Visual K. Uh, I think there were Tons of new Visual K bands, um, which just started to slowly cover this um, aggressive new metal influence style, and many bands became uh, began to play the same music. And Despair's Ray uh, really stood apart from this and found their own own niche. Um, as you may know, sadly the band had to disband in 2011 because of the vocal cord problems of uh, the singer. Um, there are many discussions if this was the real reason for the disbandment. It's not my my job to judge this. So all I know is that the band had a small re a reunion concert in 2014, but nothing came out of it. So yeah, at least there are other projects to enjoy. Um, the singer, what was his name? Hisumi uh, started to work in this design company, Umbrella. Then some of the members formed the Microhead 4Ns. And also some joined Angelo. Um, yeah, so there are many new projects to enjoy. As I dived deeper and deeper into the ocean of uh, Visual K music, um, there was one group uh, which I couldn't get around any longer. And this was, of course, the Gazette. And Gazette became one of the biggest names within the Visual K scene. I would say many fans agreed that their 2000. 10 album Dim uh, was their most important work and their most well-rounded work, but I decided for this list to go with a different album. Stacked rush Rubbish is personally for me way more important. One of the reasons is the music video for um, Filth and the Beauty, which is one of the best Visual K videos I ever saw and it's just a classic song and it was basically the prototype for many of their later um, tracks. 
Um, aside from Filth of the Beauty, we have also other good songs like The Frost, uh, Circle of Swindlers or Hyena. Hyena is pretty much part in any of their set lists for every live show or for the most of it. Um, also, the voice of singer Rookie is really on point in this album. And sometimes he comes up with very memorable and special vocal lines. For uh, for example, in Burial Applicant, these verses, and this is something really outstanding. As you may know, nowadays the band is more hit or miss. Uh, yeah, there was a big controversy about Toxic. And also, in my opinion, a Beautiful Deformity was very average. But on the other hand, you have the second side of Tuition, which is great in my opinion. And also the new album, the well, latest album, Dogma, which shows them as strong as never before. For this uh, particular album, Stacked Rubbish, I think, there wasn't hit or miss, there were only hits. It was perfect. <laughs> Dion Grey became pretty much the symbol for Wish LK within the Western metal scene. Many magazines and fans start to compare like every Japanese band with Dion Grey. Um, it's like a curse and I think often these comparisons don't really stand. However, talking about Sadi, there is this one of the bands where I would agree to some extent with this statement. Um, especially if you listen to um, their album Matrigal de Maria, which has so many Ouroboros vibes. Um, however, I still think the band isn't a copycat or something like this. Um, if you listen to songs like My Sai or Me Sai, uh, songs like these show that they have their very own handwriting. I mean, it's true, singer Mao has shares some of the same uh, vocal colors with, and also the screams and the crowds are very inspired by his idol Kyo. But all in all, I think they really found their own way of expressing themselves within Visual K. One of the albums which is very important to me is uh, The Black Diamond. I think it's really one of the strongest works, even if it's a bit underrated in my opinion. Songs like the complex Rosario or the dark opener Kimi no um, Mitai Mono um, are perfectly in point. I think Sati really showed this, this right balance between um, dreamy melodies heavy riffs and and this dramatic atmosphere and also i adore the songwriting which is pretty much streamlined and catchy but still finds place for some little experimentations and some interesting ideas kind of have an easy time to keep the songs in your memory but you will listen to it and still find some small details and this is really really interesting to me there are really diverse songs like the the pretty heavy Flavor of Blood or this this even pop-inspired or poppy um, meteor. And still they all work out and stand out on their own. So yeah, just all in all, a really great album. <laughs> Through time, my uh, musical taste drifted into the direction of metalcore music. As a reaction, I also searched for um, heavier and more aggressive um, visual K-bands. Death Gaze are definitely one of them. And the band fuses melodic rock with some groove metal, thrash metal, and even a few metalcore influences. They throw in some breakdowns and stuff like this. The special thing about the band are the vocals. You have this, um, this unique barking, uh, shouting style and combination with this overdramatic clean vocals and this remained as a trademark of them even though they changed their um, singer like two times or three times i think two times all in all i enjoy all of their releases but um, in my opinion creator is the mo uh, most outstanding one of them their music video double silence the end uh, are easily some of the best heavy visual k tracks i ever heard they are just so well composed and Every part works perfectly together. But you have also different songs like the, the Groove Machine, Ring the Death Kneel, or the very melodic um, uh, single Useless Sun. Not even to mention the fantastic uh, headbanger Newborn Wrongful Life, which is uh, reminds me of my old Slipknot fanboy days. I think this is really a good album with many sides to it, but in its core it stays this this heavy monster. Um, if you want to dive 
or if you want to go further into that discography, you shouldn't uh, miss songs like The Fantastic That Plays, uh, which has pure thrash metal riffs and some of the strongest riffs I ever heard from this scene. And also this this massive uh, acro song, uh, Genocide and Mass Murder, where you really keep headbanging through the whole song. So yeah, they have a really rich um, discography. Still, if you want a starting point, I would take Creature. Just all in all, it is this, this special tick. It has just a tick more personality than their other albums. As you know, the band, or may not know, the band uh, went on indefinite hiatus in 2014. So we may never hear from the band again, which would be quite sad. However, there are other projects to check out, like for example the solo project of the singer. Uh, for Death Case, I also discovered uh, the band Lynch, which was formed by the ex-singer Hasumi in 2004. Um, Lynch isn't quite as heavy as Death Case, but they still have these these metalcore elements and shouts in it. Again, I didn't chose a fan favorite for this list and went with the, in my opinion, criminally underrated album The Inferiority Complex instead. Sure, the album has some weaknesses, like the Finn production it could... Um, need so some more pressure and death, but all in all, I think it's really one of their strongest works. Um, I stopped counting how many times I listened to great songs like Moment or Mirrors. Yeah, I think the band has a really great feeling for melodic guitar play and catchy songwriting all in all. Um, it's also one of the few bands uh, where you really can find out the band just by listening to the instrumentals. I think they have this really, really unique um, guitar style. Uh, but it's not just the melodies, you have also some heavy parts, like in the uh, perfect title track, the inferiority complex. It's really outstanding, or even in the unconventional um, new psycho paralyze, you find this this certain groove and heaviness, which is really satif- satisfying to listen to. As I said, the instruments are outstanding in that way. I don't want to take anything away from the singer's uh, performance. I think he does a perfect job, not only in the album, but in general. And I think he has also one of these voices, uh, which is pretty unique and which you don't find in any other Wishel K band. Sure, his harsh vocals had always some room for improvement. They're, yeah, they're not perfect, but they still go well along with the instrumentation and with the riffs. If you like the inferiority complex, you may check out some of the other albums, uh, definitely Shadows and the Voided Sun, which I think are maybe their most uh, well-known albums. Nocturnal Bloodlust may be the youngest band on this list, but this doesn't take anything away from their influence. Um, they were pretty much the first band uh, which brought deathcore into the visual case scene. Sure, other bands like Dion Grey or Avoy or Avoy, however you pronounce them, um, flirted already with this genre and used his heavy death metal inspired, um, growls. But I think Nocturnal Bloodlust really took it one step forward, uh, step forward. And they also opened the way for other newcomers like Devil Loof or Scarlet Horizon, um, with this style. They kind of stayed true to their subculture's root by adding these, um, dramatic instrumentals and these 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 melodic clean vocals but then you have such riff infernos like defect in perfection which were on a totally different um level from the usual scene bands the band is also one of the most active ones at the moment and they release tons of singles and live exclusives and mini albums um for now in my opinion the second full length the Omni God is um, their best and most important work. On this one album, you have on one side these um, hook-driven, catchy songs like Desperate or Strike and Fact, and on the other side, you have uh, progressive masterwork like Genesis, and which really breaks with um, conventional songwriting and displores uh, new directions. And even some really... A strange song like Tyrant, which has straight up pop influences, somehow works out within this concept of this album. And this is really impressive to me. Um, I think always Deathcore 
let's be honest, it's a very repetitive genre where many, many bands sound exactly the same or really similar. And I think Nocturnal Bloodlusts bring their really very own twist to the genre. And if you ask me for favorites on the album, it's pretty hard. I would take the mentioned Desperate or this album, which is often, uh, this song, which is often overseen, the opener Punch Me If You Can, which also is, has really great earworm potential. <laughs> As you may notice, um, all of these albums were from the 2000s and onwards. Of course, after discovering so many great artists, I also want to discover the roots of Wish Key. And well, what should I say? It turns out I'm not a big fan of old school uh, Wish Key. And there are only few bands like Kuru Yume which really got my attention. Um, however, one of my favorites um, is Luna C. And Luna C who are around since 1986 or something, um, are also one of the few old bands which I still follow today. And I think all of the latest singers and especially their last album, A, R um, A Will from 2013, were really perfect. But of course, for this list, I don't want another to take another new album. So I picked uh, one of the older works and I decided on the album Mother. I heard Luna C fans uh, may discuss if this was the right choice, but in my opinion, it was the first album which brought me to Luna C, and especially the song Rosier, or if I pronounce it correctly, which is also pretty much on every of their um, set lists for every live show. And Rosier is really one of these these sang songs which you can't forget. And yeah, this is what brought me to this album, and then to the band. Also, you have our great songs like True Blue, uh, which also always has a hard time to get out of my ears again, because it's just so catchy. Sure, there are some predictable songs like the title track Mother, um, yeah, which is a bit cheesy and um, yeah, too constructed to, to calculate it. But you have also some surprises like um, the rather unconventional song Civilize, so all in all, it's a really great album and it doesn't lose any of its charm over all these years. So I would definitely recommend this um, album to discover the old Visual K bands. Coming to the end of the list, uh, which band could be better to end it than X Japan? Um, the band was formed as a speed metal group in 1982 and became one of the most iconic Japanese bands. And they later added uh, elements of glam rock to their appearance and became the grandfathers of Visual K. They later changed their style from the speed metal and trash metal influences more into the direction of progressive rock and they added classic elements and worked with longer song structures. A good example for this is the... Um, 29 minute song The Art of Life. However, for me, I enjoy more these older works of them. Now you can argue, uh, which is more important, Vanishing um, Vision or Blue Blood. Um, but I think this is like a discussion among Metallica fans if Ride the Lightning or Master of Puppets is the better album. You can't simply answer this. The main reason for choosing Vanishing Vision is of course Koronai, which will always be the X Japan song for me uh, with this fantastic guitar work and heavenly chorus, it's just perfect. Also looking in general at the album, I would say it um, isn't as polished as Blue Blood and has some rougher edges, which I really enjoy. I also enjoy the contrast between fast speed metal outbreaks like I Will um, Kill You and these calm, almost ballad-like songs like Live. Album has just so many different layers, um, but in the Chord will always remain this traditional metal album. One thing that I want to point out are especially the guitar solos, which are really great in this album, and I think this is an aspect of music which falls flat on many modern uh, Visual K bands. I don't want to talk about Dion Cray again, but of course, they also didn't use any solos for a very long time. Now with their new songs and their new remakes, they started to include more and more solos, but looking at the general scene, I think there are still not many bands uh, which use guitar solos. But this just aside, Vanishing Wishing is definitely a very important album of the Visual K scene and has a big influence. But as I said, their back catalog has some other pearls and especially um, Blue Blood is 
on the same level and I would definitely recommend to check it out too. This being said, we already came to the end of this video. Um, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the list and if you did, please leave me a like um, and also leave me a comment. I'm really in uh, interested about your opinion and do you agree with my albums? Uh, which ones of these would you recommend to or what are albums which you would recommend someone um, to start getting into the visual case scene? Also, as always, if you want uh, more content about Japanese music, you can always subscribe to this um, channel. This would help me out a lot. Or just uh, follow me on my Twitter where I post new music links and stuff like this from time to time. Um, yeah, so thanks again for watching and have a great day.